So, you know, I, I wanted to say in the middle here, but as we move on to our next speaker, that, you know, one of the things that's really special for me today, in part, um, and some of you may know this, uh, some of you may know this already, but I too hail from the great state of Ohio. And uh, as is our next guest speaker, Serena Brown Travis. Serena is a proud Ohio native and daughter of the legendary motivational speaker, Les Brown. That's right. Her journey has led her to writing books that inspire children and adults, becoming a restaurateur and ministering to those in need. Since her family's life works has been full of positivity, motivation, and inspiration, having small goals has never been an option for Serena. So please join me, give a warm welcome to the beautiful and charming Serena Brown Travis. Come on. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What a warm welcome. I appreciate you. So I will be well within my right to say, OH. IO. Fantastic. All right. I was going to say, don't leave me hanging, Jerry. <laughs> I couldn't find my mute button quick enough. I know. I got it. I got it. Phil, I could have done the same thing to Phil. But yes, listen, it is so good to be here today. Um, I would, first of all, like to acknowledge. Antonio T. Smith. We know him for his brilliance. Um, he is an absolute spectacular pastor and preacher. Uh, more importantly, he has been a wonderful friend and mentor to me over the years. And so um, I want to thank him for this opportunity. And it's good to know people who want to see you win more than actually you want to see yourself win. When he found me, I was in the middle of a major project. And when I tell you everything was going wrong, everything was going wrong. And so he just had this little gentle energy, like, hey, I can help you out. He wasn't too persistent, but persistent enough that he, he got my attention. So um, it's good to have a, a partner, a prayer partner, a business partner, Again, a mentor, things that I don't want to do. He's younger than me and he makes me stretch. And sometimes I tell him I don't like him like that, but I, I am grateful for him and I, I appreciate him. And so the other thing is, have you met his team? I mean, <laughs> have you met his team? Some of the most dynamic people that I've ever met, I've um, had fun and have talked to and have had coaching from Grace and Diana. And I mean, his whole team is spectacular. So if you have not met the team, matter of fact, I would encourage you, you just, just be a stalker. Just call just call the office one day and just, just go through the whole the whole team. Just say, I want to say hi to everybody. And I guarantee you, your life will be better because of it. And actually, even just in normal conversation, somehow or another, I still get pieces of nuggets from them. In fact, Tempest, I can't even halfway watch her, her speak because each and every time she makes me cry. I don't know how it happens. <laughs> it's like she's got some type of plug that says, you're about to cry, Serena. But she has a way of touching you with her words. And so for that, I am grateful. Now, I must admit, I, uh, I feel like updating my resume after I complete this, this conference. I mean, I'm here with some heavy hitters. We, I know Phil has watched my father for years, and Phil is definitely a legend in this industry. Uh, don't let his humbleness fool you. Next time I see Phil, I'll be getting his autograph. We already have a selfie, but I'll be getting his autograph. <laughs> And so I feel like even between law and for tomorrow and, and all the people that have been on this panel today, I feel like I've got to update my resume. It is indeed an honor to be with you today. And actually, Antonio does not know this, but I actually, my husband and I tested positive for COVID about two weeks ago. So when I tell you that it's good to be seen, I actually do not take this opportunity lightly. I'm grateful that I have my voice. I, I still can't smell anything. And that's actually not a bad idea. <laughs> but nonetheless, my grandmother used to tell me, you walk around like your stuff don't stink. Well, if grandma was alive. I would say, grandma, guess what? 
I can't smell a thing. <laughs> but nonetheless, I am so grateful to be here and to be alive, to not be on the ventilator. I did not even share this information with Antonio because I figured that he would think I was trying to get out of it, which I probably would have tried to, but I decided that I was going to push through. And so even if you have it, if you know anyone that has it, this, this pandemic is real. I mean, literally, I just got it from my daughter and all she did was get in the car. Uh, but the, the best part is, I think it's important to count your blessings is that I don't know how it happened. My husband and I both have it. That's okay, we're, we're big people, we can handle it. But the fact that my children have been protected from it and I got it from my daughter. I mean, if you don't believe in a God after, after that type of miracle, um, I, don't, I don't know what to tell you, but I'm so glad that we have been covered uh, for this time. And again, I'm not on the ventilator. You may hear a cough every now and again, but uh, I have Lysol nearby. And so uh, we will go ahead and get through this. Well, I would like to talk to you today about overcoming your pain, how fitting it is to have COVID and to you know, segue directly into that. But today's title is how to overcome your pain. As mentioned, my name is Serena Brown Travis. I am a wife, I'm a mother, I'm a serial entrepreneur, an author, and most people just think it's just amazing that I am the youngest daughter of the world legendary motivational speaker, Les Brown. I think it's safe to argue that we all have pain. It comes in different forms. We have mental abuse, we have the physical abuse, we have neglect, we have physical challenges, and the list can go on and on and on. And then there's also the pain that we cause ourselves. That's right. The pain of self-doubt and mental paralysis and, and low self-esteem. Now, if I asked you to confront your pain, I'm sure you can think of plenty of other things that you would like to do besides confronting your pain. And to be honest, as painful as it is, sometimes it doesn't hurt enough for us to move beyond our pain. That's right. Sometimes it's just easy just to function, just, just as is. I mean, if, if any of you grew up around this function, all you do is go in, in the room, shake your head. <laughs> this is what you used to. It is what it is. But one quote that I love, and my father says it all the time too, is when the pain of change is greater than the pain of staying the same, you'll change. It's painful, but you will change. When the pain of change is greater than the pain of saying the same, you will change. But trust you me, it is painful. I would like you to write down three letters, if you don't mind, please. The first letter is A, the second letter is T, and the last letter is S. I would like you to write down A, T, S. A, acknowledge the pain. So here's my truth. Even as the daughter of the world legendary motivational speaker, Les Brown, my pain comes from having low self-esteem, low self-worth, and no confidence. Now, <laughs> I can hear you say, what in the world? <laughs> like, you know, most people, well, I love your daddy. Your daddy inspired me, girl. And because of him, I could do X, Y, and Z. That's wonderful. But that's not my testimony. I grew up around it, but I never let the positive words that he was saying penetrate myself and penetrate my heart. It was a routine. How many of you can honestly say you've been on a routine before? And so as a result of it, I felt like once I realized what was happening, I honestly felt like the weakest link. How could myself, Serena Michelle Brown Travis, get stuck with low self-esteem. And, and how, how, how come you didn't listen to your daddy say, shoot for the moon, and even if you miss, you'll land among the stars? I did hear him say it. I was, all, I was at all the speaking engagements. Um, what about when he says some people don't fail in life because they aim too low and miss? Some people aim too life because they aim too low and hit. And I mean, when he says that, I mean, you feel that deep down inside. I listened to that too, but it never penetrated me. And so I had to realize that because I was 
talented. And this is a tough part about when people meet us and they go, oh, man, it must have been great to grow up around. It's like, yeah, now slow down, buddy. Because I, we had to lie and we had to position ourselves to look like we were um, individuals of inspiration. But the truth of the matter is we all have our own hurt and our own brokenness. And so after all of these years, in fact, I just celebrated my 40th birthday on Friday. That, I mean, the only Friday the 13th of 2020, November, Friday the 13th. So, you know, I was laying low, <laughs> but nonetheless, it has taken this long to finally acknowledge the pain. I'd like to ask you, have you acknowledged your pain. I mean, the truth of the matter is, it's easy, it's easy to maybe talk about it, to tell people what they want to hear, but have you really, 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 really acknowledged the pain? Then the truth of the matter is for me, no, I ain't acknowledged the pain. Child, I put on some good old lipstick, nice little slimming girdle, some cute jeans and heels, and I kept that day moving, honey. <laughs> <laughs> we 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 ain't supposed to let out our dirty laundry. You know how we were taught. We're not supposed to do that. But bottom line is, I had to acknowledge the the pain. And so I was I, be, before I acknowledged it. You know, I did like what everybody else does. I would just sweep it under the rug. Sweep it under the rug. That's that's what we're taught. Sweep it under the rug. Don't let people know what's going on in your house. You keep household business. Household business. All the things that we grew up knowing that if there is something going on, you better not say nothing about it. Mm -hmm. We couldn't acknowledge our pain. We were taught not to acknowledge our pain. And so I ignored it for years until the rug that I was sweeping it, all, all the stuff under, my rug got a lump. How many of you ever had a lump in your rug? Now you can try to move it around, shift it around, keep on sweeping, keep on doing all of those things. But bottom line is, my rug got a huge lump under it. Let, let's talk about the lump. Somebody say the lump. <laughs> yeah, we don't like to talk about no lump, you know, but bottom line is acknowledge the pain, overcome the pain. But let's talk about this lump. This is where your pain becomes more visible to other people. This is the obvious bags forming under your eyes. These are the circle, the dark circles that are under your eyes. This is when your, your eyes get red and, and you're not feeling it. This is when your temper is out of control. This is when you, you, you push away people in your life. I mean, this is my lump. Actually, when I met Antonio, I had my lump. I have my love. He, he tried, he, you know, he kept calling me. I thought, I'm like, man, this dude is kind of crazy. He seems like an over the top fan, <laughs> but I had a lump. And if I didn't, thankfully everything was kind of coming together at the, at the same time. But if I didn't recognize what was going on with me, I, because of the lump, I would have pushed some valuable friendships and valuable connections away. And so how many of you have had a lump in your life and you've had to deal with the lump? Now, us women, we know like if we get like a pimple or something on our face, we're like, uh-uh, don't, don't touch it. Don't touch it. Leave, leave it there. Let it come to a head. It's going to hurt, but leave, leave it there and don't touch it because if you touch it, it's going to leave a mark. Well, so ladies and gentlemen, for me, it was easier to even sweep around the lump. It's easier to avoid the lump. I, I told you this first, this first point is A, acknowledge your pain. But it's hard to acknowledge your pain when you're taught not to. It's hard to acknowledge your pain when you can just sweep it under the rug. But um, it, it became too painful. The, the, the pain and the secrets and the, everything that I was hanging on to, it literally began to choke the life out of me. And so I realized that there were things in me that I, as my father would say, there's things in you that you have yet to be to uh, begin to imagine. So I heard that, but I was like, well, no, we ain't going to do nothing because uh, I'm straight. I, I feel number one, I already feel like the wink link of the family. But number two, I'm good. I'll, I'll just I'll just survive. How many of us have ever said it's not that deep? It's not that serious. But see, there's also something inside of you that you also still know that there's more. That's why here on a Friday afternoon, we're, we're surrounded at the, at the table, getting more, more nuggets, more inspiration, more, more. I mean, we, and we have a dedicated list of individuals who are pouring into us. So, you know, there's more. So yes, there may be that lump. But you also got you also are bringing in more more positivity, more laughter, more humor into your life and into your business. And I also realized that with the lump, I couldn't move forward. I was completely I was completely. 
Yeah, most of us do. I, I whispered gently. I just said, God, God, help me. I, I couldn't, there was, I, I couldn't even really put words into what was going on. How many of you have ever been there? You just, you don't know what you need. You just say, just help me. Just help me. So again, acknowledge the pain, acknowledge where you are, acknowledge exactly where you are. And now we have to figure out how to fix it. Everybody say T. Oh, I assume you said T. I almost feel my, my little Baptist roots coming on. Did you see my shoulders move? Everybody say T. <laughs> T is tackle the pain. Go ahead and tackle it. Now, I thought I could pray it away and everything and life would be great. Cause you know, you know, you know how that works. You know, just pray about it. Just pray, you know, ask God to intercede on your behalf. You know, that's cute. You can pray all you want, but faith, but you know, we know that we have to pray and we have to work. We've got to study. We've got to do more than just pray about it. But so that's why T is to tackle it because you can't be, you can't be casual when, when you, when you decide to acknowledge it and tackle it, because if you're casual about it, you'll become a casualty. And so therefore you have to tackle it with force. You have to tackle it with, with determination that I'm not going to feel like this anymore. I'm going to get out of this place. I'm going to do more with myself. I'm going to do more with my life. Everybody say tackle it. We can say tackle it for other things that we have going on. We have an incredible business opportunity in front of us that we need to do what? We need to tackle it. We can't sit by and, and just assume and watch other people make moves around us. Even though we're in the middle of a pandemic and in the middle of a shutdown, trust you me, people are thinking, people are making money in spite of. And so therefore, kudos again to Antonio T. Smith and his team for tackling the problem and bringing us in. How many are grateful to be here for this, for this opportunity today? Absolutely. You have to tackle this thing. So tackle your own personal economy, tackle your own business, tackle all the things that are happening around you, but you also have to tackle your pain. That's right. Because see, bottom line is if I didn't tackle my pain, I still couldn't move. If I didn't tackle what was going on in my life, I still would be stuck. So therefore tackle the pain. Now, I didn't know that overcoming pain would be, would also be painful. <laughs> Have you ever ripped off a Band-Aid too fast? And everybody's like, take the Band-Aid off. You're about to get better. Baby, don't touch this Band-Aid or we're about to have some issues. Tackling the pain can be painful. I thought, I thought once we tackled it, that everything would be, you know, nice and easy. And I could start, you know, just, just, you know, running in the wind and, and have a rainbow and bubbles follow me. No boo-boo. When I tackled the pain, it seemed like it got worse. <laughs> it seemed like it absolutely got worse. But I knew that I had to do something different. I knew that I had to do something different. So when we tackle our pain, the truth of the matter is, we really don't want to talk about it. But then we do. Have you been there? You, you want to be well, but then you don't. Because then all of a sudden, what if you get well and all of a sudden, um, well, what's my excuse now? <laughs> What, what's holding you back now? So you tackle your pain, if you acknowledge it, and then you tackle it. Oh, wait a minute. That means, that means I've got to get moving. So you want to talk about it, but then you don't. You, you want to get well, but then you don't. I, I think there's a reason why there's a biblical story that Jesus asked the man, do you want to get well? That's my question to you. Do, you. do you want to get well? Do you want to get past your pain? Or is it easier and, and more complex and more entertaining to keep talking about it? Do you want to be rich? Or is it easier to talk about how bad the economy is? Do you want to get well? But I have a, a funny suspicion that I'm around some people who are visionaries and who are around or, or who are about making it happen. Because again, we wouldn't have all these people on one phone call one, one Zoom meeting if you weren't serious about tackling some things in your life. So again, let's, let's do a, a hand clap for you for tackling whatever's going on in your life. So my excuses, how many of you all have had excuses for not doing things before? Yeah, all of us have. You know, I, well, I, I don't want to do it because I'm not qualified. I don't want to do it because I don't know enough about the program. I, I don't want to do it because I don't live in the area. Well, how many of you all know that excuses become your comfort zone? That's right. Excuses become 
urge you to get out of your comfort zone. I know that I cannot change the past that I cannot confront. So if you've got some pain going on in your life, you can't change it unless you're ready to confront it. That's right. Now, listen, I, I get it. I don't know if I like to talk about this stuff, but at this point in life, we've got way too much going on, way too much going on too quickly. And if we don't get ourselves together, life is going to pass by us. So I encourage you to tackle your pain. So do I really, do you really have to go back and tell your abuser, you the, the person who, who did you wrong, do you really have to go back and say, I know what you tried to do to me, but it didn't work? Yep, you do. You do. Because not only are you going to tackle it, you're going to start telling your pain, you're about to go away. So absolutely, you confront it, you tackle it, you let them know, listen, you tried it. I love that. You tried it, but it didn't work. You didn't work. Well, well, what if, what if I confront them and they deny it? They'll probably do so because don't nobody like to be wrong. What, what, what if they try to make it like it's my fault? Guess what? It wasn't. It wasn't. It was probably something in you that they, they something that was burning in you that some, some type of light ray of light that you had, that they just didn't like. And so therefore they didn't know how else to handle it, but to beat you down and to make you feel like you can't do anything good. What if they make excuses for their actions? They will, they will. So you're telling me, Serena, I really have to look in the mirror and I really have to find some beauty in myself and say that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Yep, you do. And I'll tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not asking you to do anything that I haven't had to do. See, the truth of the matter is, if you were anything like me, I don't like looking in the mirror. I just, you know, make sure everything is kind of put together, got the, got the eyeshadow, make sure the eyebrows are on point, you know, make sure that the lip gloss is not on my teeth and I keep it moving. But, but this particular day when I had to acknowledge my pain and then I had to tackle it, I had to look in the mirror. I had to stand there for a few hours. And, and unfortunately, I was trying to find some positive things. But how many of you know when you're trying to shift your mindset around that the negative stuff still comes up? So I found everything wrong with me still. <laughs> I mean, I found everything wrong. I found places that I could have, I could still lose some weight here. And um, let's see here. I, oh, I did, that's a little flabby right there. I didn't see anything that was beautiful about myself. But again, when you've been in such a rut, it's going to take a while. It, it does not happen instantly. But when you have mentors in your life, such as, such as Antonio T. Smith, and you have Phil, and you have Grace, and you have Deanna, folks who pour into you, folks like Law, that I've watched his, I've watched his career when he came to one of my father's trainings, and all of a sudden, he has found his voice baby. But it, it, it takes a minute. It takes a minute to move. It takes a minute to get off of the, of the nail. And so therefore, you, you will try. You will say, I'm going, to, I'm going to tackle this thing. And all of a sudden, self-doubt will creep in. Now, I'm going to tackle this thing. You know, I, I'm going to go ahead and do this thing. And all of a sudden, you'll tell yourself to sit down. You'll find every reason to avoid confronting what's happening. You'll certainly find every reason to avoid getting yourself out of it. So what are you suggesting, Serena? Well, I'm, I'm glad you asked. Again, you cannot be casual about getting over your pain. You absolutely cannot. It's all or it's nothing. And I said it earlier, if you remain casual, you become what? A casualty. Absolutely. If you're casual about anything for that matter. So even for the business opportunity that we have here at hand, it's not going to work unless you work it. You can't be casual about it. If you're casual about life, you'll be a casualty. If you're casual about your business, your business, your business will go out of business. If you're casual about anything, it will automatically become a casualty. It won't work unless you work it. So how devastating would that be for you to not reach your full potential? How, how devastating would that be for us to have a million and even a billion dollar opportunity in front of us and we don't, we don't tackle it? So we, we have all said to ourselves, you know what, I, I'm afraid. I'm afraid if you're like me, it, isn't it easier just to kind of be stuck where you are? Because <laughs> again, you just say, it's not that bad. I can deal with it. I, de I dealt with it for this long. You know, hey, I'm good. <laughs> I done found my pattern on, on how to deal with it. It doesn't hurt that bad. We've all said that. It's not that deep. It's not serious. 
But to be honest, telling pain makes you come brutally honest. Now, if you like me, sometimes honesty, I don't know about honesty being the best policy. That, that's what they taught us in kindergarten. <laughs> but when you become an adult, you know, this honest stuff, I don't know. You know, and you, you come from a family like mine, well, honey, we can spin anything. <laughs> I mean, I, and I'm serious. We can give a quote, a scripture, and a story to go along with, with something that we just completely fabricated. So we had to learn. And I even had to say, yo, we got to quit playing. We, you know, we're playing, we're, we're, we're supposed to be pouring into people's lives. So let's, let's not, let's not do it half-heartedly. Let's not, uh, as my grandma would say, she would say, don't half way do it. Amen for grandma and her undiplomatic ways. <laughs> but nonetheless, you have to be honest with yourself. And so here's some questions I have for you. And think about where you are. Think about some of your dark places. Think about some things that bother you. Think about places in your life that you cannot move. What brought you here? What brought you here? What got you to where you are right now? And you may say, I, I don't know. Well, I need you to think about it. What got you here? What's the uncomfortable truth that you're not being honest about? When did it happen? Well, you know, I've heard people say, well, it doesn't really matter when it happened. You know, the fact, the fact of the matter is it happened. Well, no, no, no. We got to go back to when. When did it happen? When did someone tell you that you weren't capable? When did someone say that it wasn't possible for you? Because then you can maybe figure out, wait a minute, you know what? They told me that I couldn't do it, but I was, I was around the wrong people. I was around a crowd that also agreed with them. When did it happen? See, I find that you have to do a self-analysis in order to figure out how to go back and acknowledge the pain and how to tackle the pain. Who were the players involved? You know, a lot of times we give passes to people who are our family members. A lot of times we give passes when somebody's talking crazy, oh, that's my cousin, that's how they are. No, but who were the players involved? Who, who, who helped you get the mindset that you have right now? Either they, they helped to participate in it or, they, or someone should have said, nah, bro, we're not talking like that. We're not doing that. Who were the players involved? So I can tell you again, and I, I, I don't say this to boast him up, but I'm just giving from my personal story is that when I was going through my lump experience, the, some of the players involved that got me out, Antonio T. Smith, I must give credit to God. You know, we, I certainly thank, him, thank, thank God for what he was able to do and, and, and how my vision was restored. The staff members of, of the ATS team, who were the players involved? So you, you will have some players that help bring you down. And you also have some other players that get in the trenches with you and will help you tackle the problem and help bring you out. Those are the type of people that you want in your life. Here's my next question for, for you is why are you still here? Why are you still here? And I, I, I mean that, why? Why are you still here? Are you comfortable here? Or are you ready to make a difference with your life? Are you comfortable here? Or are you ready to get past the pain that has you paralyzed? Are you comfortable here or are you ready to do something different with your finances to help make an impact for the world? Why are you still here? And here's my last question is what are you going to do about it? Yes, you. What are you going to do about it? You, you mean, Serena, I just can't keep blaming people for my problems? Nope. <laughs> nope. Because some of those people that you want to blame, like I said, some of them, they're going to they're gonna say it didn't happen. They're going to put it on you. They're going to say, well, I did it because, I said it because, I acted that way because. So what are you going to do about it? Well, I tell you what, here, here's some of the things that I did. Number one, I certainly prayed. I prayed, I prayed, I prayed. Sometimes I got answers, sometimes I didn't. But there's something about being in, in solitude and, and being in prayer, just, just to get connected with your inner being, just to get connected with, with the man upstairs. So pray, pray, pray and get answers. Turn some things off so that you can tackle your mind. Sometimes our minds are always racing, always, always racing. So pray, read books. Matter of fact, you see, oh, I think you can see it. So happy and grateful. So grateful. 
by my mentor, by my friend, by the dude that gets on my nerves sometimes because he's always pushing me to do something. But it's a, it is indeed a great book. So happy and grateful. Well, you know, it's hard to still be miserable when you start thinking of reasons why you're grateful. We see how thick this book is. So happy and grateful. I don't, I mean, a thick book on gratitude. So happy and grateful. So ladies and gentlemen, I would encourage you to figure out what you're grateful for. Because when I can start thinking about the fact that I have COVID-19, my husband and I both have it. When I think about the fact that I could be on the ventilator, when I think about the fact that every time I turn on the television and I see how many people have died from it, how many people are being admitted to the hospitals, how many people are now looking at, at uh, opening up convention centers and garages to house hospital beds. And I think about that I just had a stuffed up nose and yes, I've been tired. Yeah, I've had some of the symptoms, but I'm grateful. I'm grateful that I'm able to sit here and not, not sit in the hospital room trying to tell y'all, hey, Antonio, I'm sorry, bro, I can't do this today. Grateful. great Being grateful brings out something different in you. So figure out what you're grateful for and get books, get books to inspire you. If you can't figure out what you're grateful for, go ahead and get Antonio T. Smith's book on So Happy and Grateful. I guarantee you'll start writing stuff down. You know what? I forgot about that point, that part of my life. I'm grateful for that too. I forgot that, yes, I was hungry, but someone fed me. I forgot about that. I'm grateful too. I forgot that mm, the lights almost got cut off, but they didn't. I forgot forgot that the bill was almost past due, but all of a sudden, somehow or another, resources were made. So you have to tackle, tackle your problems, tackle it, and you've got to move full speed ahead. Read books, pray, get quiet, and get a journal. Absolutely, get a journal, get a journal, and promise yourself that you won't lie to yourself again. I think that's the biggest one. Now, no one really likes this Serena that calls it like it is. And it doesn't mean I go around telling people like it is. But I, if I see, if, if, if my spirit says that, that's not true. Oh, we calling you out. We, I'm not lying not one more time. Not one more time. I'm not lying again. Don't lie again. Don't lie to yourself again. And let's stop sweeping stuff up under the rug. It's time to get that lump out. Get that lump out. So everybody say, tackle the lump. The lump ain't cute no more. Which leads me to my last and final point. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. S, succeed in spite of it. That's right, succeed in spite of it. Man, you don't, you don't get it, Serena. My life was really messed up. You know, you had a little differently. You know, your daddy has some money. He, you guys got to travel. Listen, <laughs> on a different call, we'll, we'll do personal testimonies. <laughs> succeed in spite of whatever's going on in your life. So what, you know, your, your mama left you, you don't know who your father is, you were abused, you were left for dead, you saw things that you can't unsee. I get it. I get it more than you would ever begin to imagine. Succeed, succeed in spite of it. How many of you, I, I realize that God will try to use everything that you've tried to bury. So, so don't think that you're going to get away from your story. I tried to. I tried to. I thought it would be much easier to, to just keep on moving and act like nothing was going on. But God will use everything that you're trying to bury. What are the odds that me, the youngest daughter of Les Brown, would struggle with things that my father has made a living off of? What are the odds that I could say, no, I, I get low self-esteem. I get depression. I get having a low self-worth. What are the odds? So everything that you struggle with right now, some of the things in your past that are embarrassing, succeed in spite of it. Perhaps you're familiar with the little boy who was adopted, born on the floor with his twin brother, labeled as a slow learner and separated from the rest of his peers academically. He failed twice in school, never had good grades at all. In fact, when he graduated at the age of 20, it was a, gradu it was a, gra it was a graduate certificate of attendance, nothing academically. But in spite, in spite of him being called DT, the dumb twin, he found a niche. My dad loved to talk in class, <laughs> so he was the class clown. He had a magnetic personality and even made the teachers laugh before they scolded him. The same guy, the, the guy DT, the dumb twin, has encouraged millions of people, millions of people to live 
he's encouraged millions of people to shoot for the moon. And even if they miss, they'll land them on the stars. He's told millions of people it's not over until you win. And somehow or another, they believed him. I know another young man, he was born and lived in a dumpster. He, he didn't have access to, to viable housing. He didn't have access to, to designer clothes. But I know another man that had the same story. And we're here today because of him. We're here today. I know I'm here today because of his prayers, because of his mentoring, because of his leadership. He succeeded in spite of it. In fact, truth be told, he could have been and should have been locked up in jail or, or maybe even thrown away as society has thrown him away. But you succeed in spite of it. I'd like to leave you with, with this last story that it touched me. I've, I've known about it for years. There was a lady who was abused and and uh, beat up terribly by her boyfriend. I mean, he, he beat her up so bad. In fact, he wrapped her up and put tape around the sheet so that he, he, he beat her up, knocked her out, put a sheet on her, wrapped her up in tape and threw her outside on the side of the road. And she was knocked out. Truth of the matter is she should have been left for dead. She was left for dead and she should have died. Then it started to rain. It was a cold, cold night and it started to rain. And somehow or another, she regained consciousness. She realized that she was wrapped tightly in a sheet. She didn't know what was outside of the sheet, but then she started to feel the coldness of the air. She started to feel the rain penetrate through the sheet. But all of a sudden, somehow or another, she decided she wasn't going to die there. And so my question for you is, wherever you are right now, say to yourself, I'm not going to die right here. You have to succeed in spite of it. This lady, even though she was battered, she was bruised, she was bleeding, her bones were broken, she was tired, she was bruised, she began to wiggle. Now, I told you it started to rain. So the rain seems like this, just like how it happens in our life, that every now and again, when we think it couldn't get any worse, it gets worse, and, and it starts to rain on our situation. What her abuser didn't know and what this lady didn't know is that she was wrapped in duct tape. If anyone knows anything about duct tape, duct tape does not hold up when it gets wet. Duct tape doesn't hold up in the rain. So even in spite of her grim situation, she was wrapped in tape. She should have been left for dead. It started to rain. She was able to wiggle and press. She was able to tackle and confront the things going on in her life. In spite of the pain, in spite of her broken bones, she kept on moving. She was able to get herself unravel from the tape, able to pull the sheet off of her, climb her way out of a ditch and wave down a car to get help. Succeed, ladies and gentlemen, in spite of what's going on, in spite of what you've come from, in spite of your, your finances, in spite of wherever it is you're going, succeed in spite of who your mama is, who your daddy is, what they did for you, what they didn't do for you, succeed in spite of it. Now, I'm not sure if my time is almost up, so I'll go ahead and conclude it there, but succeed in spite of your pain. Overcome the pain in your life. It is indeed possible, and you can do it. This has been Serena Brown Travis. I cannot thank you enough for this opportunity. Antonio, I appreciate you. Love you like a brother. Love you like a friend. Sometimes I don't love you at all. <laughs> And that's only because you pushed me to get the best out of me. But I appreciate what you've meant to me and to my career. And I cannot thank you enough. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for your time. Awesome, Serena. Awesome. I love to listen to you speak. I think this is only the second or third time I've heard you and had the pleasure. But um, you have a certain way of just getting right to the heart of the matter. That's for sure. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I I'm grateful. <laughs> You're so welcome. There was a, a couple of questions, I think, in the chat. Um, okay. We've got some time left, so we'll, we'll look a little bit at, uh, at, at digging in a little deeper. Uh, one question that was asked, uh, Dr. Sugar Trask asked the question, what was your darkest moment? My darkest moment. So in fact, this was when Antonio about came along. <laughs> but uh, during that time, I had, uh, when I talk about the lump under the rug, the truth of the matter is, I think I had to be about 37, 37, 36, 37. Uh, the doctors found a lump in my breast. And so anyone who knows just how traumatic that can be. Um, so when I realized what was going on, I realized that I had the lump 
I, I metaphorically always say the lump under the rug, but the truth is the stress and everything that I was going through, what it formed in my body and created a lump in, in my breast. Thankfully, it was benign, so no cancer at all. But uh, the darkest moment, I must say, is realizing how much I lied to myself just to, just to go along to get along. That was the darkest moment when I really had to sit. And it's interesting how your mind can play tricks on you. It's interesting how you protect some of the people who have done uh, done you wrong. And when you really have to sit and start unraveling and peeling the layers back, that was a dark moment. That was the, man, I thought you were there for me. I can't believe you sabotage, you know, that those were some dark, some dark moments that I had to be honest with myself and, and really look at what was going on. To follow that up, what would you say was your turning point? When did you finally say, okay, Serena, enough is enough. I've been running from my story and I'm, I'm stopping right here and I'm turning around and facing it. Right. So the turning point, I still would be running if it didn't happen. It was a supernatural turning point. So anyone who practices their faith and you know how God can, can work, you know, he has a sense of humor. He has a way of throwing his weight around. And so I literally, Antonio can tell you, I called him, I was crying. I said, Hey, I think I hear God talking again. I could probably cry now. Uh, so the turning point was was God getting me to settle down, to um, to you know to settle down right where I was, and He had my back up against the wall. I literally had no place to go, and I mean, I started trying to even wiggle out of the wall, <laughs> wiggle wiggle from the wall, and so so happened. I happened to call Antonio. I just wanted him to talk about something else. And he heard it. He knew exactly what I was struggling with. And he said, okay, God has spoken. So whew, we try not to cry, but anyways, that's it. <laughs> that's, that's incredible. Again, thanks so much for spending the time with us today. Uh, you are just phenomenal. And it's always such a joy. Um, I'm looking forward to when I can actually meet you myself in person. Me too. Me too. And I'll be asking for the autograph. <laughs> I'll be doing this for the autograph. So. Sounds Thanks. good. Well, listen, I cannot wait to wrap my arms around all of you all. I miss you. I miss my team in, in Texas. And so, again, I cannot wait to meet you face to face, as you said, Jerry. I appreciate you and everything that you're doing today for this call. Oh, thank you so much. Well, take good care of yourself. Lots of fluids. Don't forget the vitamin D and the zinc. Oh, listen, uh, anyone Very who good. knows my dad knows that he, first of all, I thought, I thought most people already knew because he told everybody on his Facebook page and he told them several times and he's the type that he'll tell the story and then he'll call you to say, Hey, baby, I told people. So my phone is blowing up, but I have a whole, you almost think that I could open up a vitamin store. Trust you, <laughs> he has sent me, I mean, elderberry, all, all this stuff. He's trying to get me well, which I can appreciate. <laughs> well, that's, you know, that's the kind of stuff we should all be doing all the time. And and we slack off of it. We so do. that's why we, you know, I, I believe I, I had the, uh, the virus early back in April. Right, right. And... Uh, and, you know, I'm not a spring chicken anymore either. So you've, you've really got to take care of yourself. And, and I've, uh, I've made a new devotion to do that moving Absolutely. forward. So Absolutely. Well, it's good to see you as a survivor. You look amazing. And again, I'm so glad that, that God spared your life as well. So amen to that. Amen to that for sure. Right. Thank you, Serena. Thank Everybody, you. please pour out to Serena. Let her know how thankful we are for her to to be with us today, uh, it, just just so wonderful. Um, you know, she she breaks down things to the simplest terms, and I know we all deal with these kinds of issues. We all do. Uh, Self esteem is not you know is not something that's limited to any one person or any one group, male or female or anything. It's something I've studied for a long time. And, and it is so critical for us to, to have that self-talk. And the way you put it uh, with the ATS, of course, that was just beautiful. <laughs> Acknowledge it, tackle it, and succeed in spite of it. I love it. I just love it. So big round of applause, please, for Serena Brown Travis. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you.